Executives at Tokyo Electric Power Company have spent more than a year analyzing what went wrong on March 11, 2011, the day an earthquake and tsunami disabled one of their nuclear facilities. Their final report into the accident at Fukushima Daiichi offers a different view compared to other investigations, but it leaves some key questions unanswered. As the company that caused the accident, we have a social obligation to carry out a thorough investigation. We must learn from the findings and make them public. TEPCO execs say their probe into the accident involved on-site assessments and interviews with about 600 staff. The report says workers did everything they could to deal with unexpected events. It argues they generally took appropriate measures. The government panel investigating the crisis, in contrast, blamed staff for not properly operating the emergency cooling system. TEPCO's version of events is critical of politicians. It says government interference made matters worse and led to failures in dealing with the accident. It cites then Prime Minister Naoto Kan as an example. He inspected the plant from a helicopter a day after the crisis started. The report also says Kan was constantly on the phone, issuing orders and asking people for information. It says the intervention didn't help. But the utility's investigation doesn't address some concerns. For one, it fails to pinpoint what caused the release of so much radioactive material. It also doesn't detail how much damage the reactors suffered from the earthquake independent of the tsunami. The TEPCO report follows investigations by a government committee, a diet panel, and an independent group into how the utility and the government dealt with the crisis. But no investigation so far has looked squarely at what caused the meltdowns. That task has been left to TEPCO because many parts of Fukushima Daiichi are still off limits or difficult to access because of high radiation levels. I'm very doubtful that this report has delved into the accident in any real sense. A framework needs to be created to ensure a more independent perspective. There needs to be a more independent analysis to pinpoint the problems that need to be addressed and to point out where changes should be made. All of Japan's 50 nuclear reactors are currently offline for regular maintenance. They have to pass new safety tests before they can go back online. The work to fire up the first unit since the Fukushima accident is getting off to a rocky start. An alarm sounded on a reactor water level detector at the OE power plant in central Japan, but the operator of the facility and safety officials waited 13 hours before informing the public. Kansai Electric Power Company spokespersons say the alarm went off in Reactor 3. They say it suggested the water level had fallen in a tank used to cool a generator. Workers discovered the level was about 5 centimeters lower than usual, but they found no leaks, so their investigation is ongoing. Engineers began the process of restarting Reactor 3 last weekend, soon after Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda gave the go-ahead to put it and Reactor 4 back online. Noda's government has set up a special monitoring system to improve safety. Inspectors are stationed at the plant to deal with the accidents and other problems. Kansai Electric representatives say they didn't make the information about the alarm public Tuesday because the incident didn't require disclosure by law or by in-house rules. But the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency official who is based at the plant apologized, saying his lapse in judgment delayed disclosure. Residents in the town of Oi, which hosts the plant, are criticizing the time it took to release the information. It makes me scared about the restart. Quick action in cases like this is vital. The OE reactors are expected to start generating power before the end of July. Uh, here, uh, this band across the southeastern coast of Japan is going to be lingering here for a while now and impacting much of the southern half of the country in the next 24 hours. We also do have another tropical storm just around Taiwan. Let me show you a video coming out from Taiwan now.
Uh, this is the uh, island of Taiwan, which has been battered by heavy rainfall the past several weeks. Now residents are making preparations for Talim, the first major storm of the year, and people have been clearing riverways using construction equipment to allow the swiftest flow possible as heavy rainfall begins. Over 40,000 soldiers from Taiwan military have taken action, piling up sandbags, you can see here. So they are being pre precautious, but uh, take a look at the track pulling back here. This is the Talim, which is going to be speeding at the speed of uh, 20 kilometers per hour. Looks like it's going to be aiming towards Kyushu in Japan, but it will be skillfully moving across these uh, borders of, uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, in between Taiwan and southeastern China. We have a report of 244 millimeters in the past 24 hours in western Taiwan. And uh, Taipei has closed down schools and businesses already, as this will be impacting heavily the area. 250 to 300 millimeters of rainfall could be targeted targeting these regions, so slamming Taiwan and southeastern China with those heavy rain to come. It looks like it will be dissipating by the time it reaches north of southwestern islands as a remnant low, but reminding you that that rainy season band is just uh, skirting across uh, much of these widespread showers, which will be intensifying as it moves into Kyushu region. 100 to 100, uh, 250 millimeters of rainfall could be possible in the next 24 hours. Kyushu Shikoku region in the next 24 hours. One of Japan's three big makers of nuclear reactors is turning in a big way to alternative energy. Toshiba has announced Japan's largest ever solar power project near the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant that it helped to build. Toshiba managing director Takeshi Yokota signed a deal with the mayor of Minamisoma, Katsunobu Sakurai. The city is just north of the plant. The deal means that Toshiba will build several solar power stations along the coast. Construction of new houses is banned there since last year's disaster because the area is now a tsunami risk zone. <laughs> What's so funny now? I sometimes just think funny things. <laughs> the city plans to buy 1.5 million square meters of land and lease it to a venture set up by Toshiba. Construction will start in March and the plants will begin operating in 2014. They'll provide up to 100 megawatts of electricity, enough to meet the demands of 30,000 homes. That makes it Japan's largest solar power project. Minamisoma wants to end its dependence on nuclear power and eventually switch entirely to renewable energy. The project will be a big step forward for our reconstruction. And it will serve as encouragement to residents. The uncertainty hanging over the Middle East has left many in the Asia-Pacific region concerned about energy supplies. With this in mind, members of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum are preparing to meet to address the issue. Officials from the 21-member APEC Forum will gather in St. Petersburg, Russia on Monday. They'll discuss ways to secure stable energy supplies. As the global demand for natural gas has been increasing, the Forum is expected to agree on boosting the output and trade of natural gas in the region. In the meeting, Japan will also explain its decision to restart a suspended nuclear power plant, the first to start operating since the accident in Fukushima. It will also explain its efforts to ensure nuclear safety. The ministers will issue a St. Petersburg declaration at the end of the meeting. Shines for her. He 
West of Tokyo, a young seal has been rescued from stormy seas whipped up by Typhoon Guchul. It was found lost and in distress on a beach and taken to Enoshima Aquarium in Fujisawa City, Kanagawa Prefecture on Tuesday. Aquarium experts took the animal in after deciding it would likely have difficulty getting food in the high seas accompanying the storm. The aquarium says the seal is between one and three years old and appears to have an injury to its jaw. So far, it seems to be recovering steadily and has eaten some fish and tried out the aquarium's pool. A keeper at the aquarium says he has no idea why an animal that typically lives in cold northern seas should come all the way to a beach near Tokyo. <laughs> 